each new generation, we patiently await those games which push the limits of console technology. Games created by developers which utilize the latest technology to present new concepts and exciting gameplay. In the world of PlayStation, there is perhaps no studio as revered in this regard as Naughty Dog, and with Uncharted 4 A Thief's End, the bar has been raised once more. This is John from Digital Foundry, and today I'd like to invite you to join me as I delve one last time into the world of Nathan Drake. Exceeding our wildest expectations, Uncharted 4 sets new standards for real-time rendering in games, and we're here to examine these accomplishments. So get comfortable, grab a drink, and prepare yourself for arguably the most impressive technical accomplishment on PlayStation 4 to date. But first, let's refresh ourselves on the basics. Uncharted 4 delivers a full 1080p image at 30 frames per second for the duration of the story mode, while the game's multiplayer instead targets 900p at 60 frames per second. This is combined with an incredibly high quality temporal anti-aliasing solution that eliminates shimmering and helps produce a very clean overall image. While anisotropic filtering isn't perfect and sometimes limited to just 4x, the overall impression here is that Uncharted 4 delivers some of the best image quality we've seen in a console game to date. Anyone that's familiar with the series will know that Uncharted is a series built on the strength of its characters, so it should come as no surprise that Nathan Drake and friends have received the utmost attention. Excellent skin shading combined with subsurface scattering ensures that characters appear realistic in various lighting conditions. Facial deformation allows skin and fat to adjust naturally to facial expressions, while dirt and sweat help ground the characters in the game world. This is heightened by remarkably realistic facial animation, which utilizes a mix of captured information and hand animation to great effect. Hair is another high point, with light penetrating uniquely on a per-character and scene basis. The way light plays off Nadine's curls in the scene showcases this nicely, but it's noticeable throughout the game. It's not quite tress effects here, but hair rendering is definitely top class and consistently great across all characters. Outfits are certainly nice as well. Clothing worn by the cast features a proper Freno effect, giving cloth an appropriately fuzzy appearance, while leather and metal exhibit the expected properties as well. We also see physics applied to things such as the rope hanging from Drake's waist and the collar on his shirt. What really impresses us here, though, is the shift away from pre-rendered cutscenes. You may recall that previous Uncharted titles and The Last of Us leaned heavily on pre-recorded movie files to push the story along. Uncharted 4, however, sheds this entirely and delivers the bulk of its story entirely in real time. All of the aforementioned strides made in real-time rendering above are delivered in real time by the PlayStation 4 hardware, and it's glorious. The advantage to this approach is the ability to seamlessly blend in and out of gameplay and remove constraints necessitated by using pre-rendered sequences in the past. It's clear that this new approach was necessary due to the disk space constraints, but the benefits of going fully real-time are evident throughout. Moving from the cinematics to gameplay and back again is just incredibly seamless now, with the camera able to drop players right into the action without a hitch. Now you may be wondering how the game is able to transition so quickly between different scenes, and while it does happen in real time at points, there are actually occasional filler video clips used. This shot here, which appears just after a transition from another point in the game, is actually a video file. But the game quickly switches back to real time once the camera cuts. So how can you check this for yourself? Well, it's simple, photo mode. Uncharted 4 allows users to enter photo mode at any point and, as long as the scene is in real time, you can zoom in and apply various effects to the image. When video sequences pop up, you can still bring up the photo mode options, but the settings don't actually do anything. Interesting, huh? Both cutscenes and gameplay showcase highly refined animation work as well. During gameplay, Nate has a real weight to his movement that blends very well with the environment. 
Everything just feels more natural than before, and transitions between different animations are now seamless. The game is able to blend together many different smaller animations into a cohesive whole thanks to the advanced layering system. This all plays into Uncharted 4's impressive physics simulation. Characters all have proper weight while moving and reacting, while many of the objects within the world can be destroyed. When you take down an enemy, his death animation is directly influenced by his velocity and direction. This actually applies to physics as a whole. The direction and speed of impact determines the reaction from destroyed objects. Slam into a pile of wooden crates or a fence and watch as the debris flies forward thanks to the momentum of the jeep. It's really incredible to see the way the objects react in various firefights, from the sandbags draining here to the way the objects roll and move about under fire. Some of these features are simply animations with basic playback based on the external stimuli, but complex shaders and particles often come into play in creating them. Attention has also been paid to how things like foliage react to Nate and crew. Pushing through tall grass is convincing here, as it should be considering that it's now part of the stealth system. You can use this tall grass to hide from your enemies while taking out an entire base without ever firing a shot. Beyond that, the wind and weather system is used very effectively throughout the game. Artists can adjust the wind direction and strength, which translates into a very active scene, from the gently swaying grass of Madagascar to the violently blowing trees you encounter during a storm. It's all there and very impressive. Foliage is also impacted by forces such as grenades, where particles are spawned just as the explosion occurs in order to blow back the grass realistically. Whether it's foliage or debris, all of these interactive objects are designed to move and act as you would expect. Weather in general is handled beautifully here as well. The pouring rains on this island really give the impression of a violent storm being impacted by strong wind. Move over Metal Gear Solid 2, we have a new champion. The water simulation is also excellent, with variations in intensity depending on the scene. From the turbulent ocean to the more tranquil pools of water, it all works very well. We especially love how the lighting from explosions beneath the water in this scene actually change the color of the surface. Oh, and the wind simulation even has an effect on the water surface here. The list just goes on and on. How about another element? Fire. Explosions are massive in Uncharted 4 and contribute greatly to the action. Plumes of smoke are nicely animated and actually accept shadows from the surrounding scenery, which helps ground the effect in the world. Overall, the use of physics, destruction, weather, and water really elevates the presentation to the next level, and even factors into the gameplay. Along the way, you will enjoy plenty of amazing scenery, as Uncharted 4 features some of the most varied and impressive locales we've ever seen. The lighting, materials, and construction are top-notch throughout. At its base, Uncharted 4 utilizes a pre-calculated global illumination solution that produces very realistic results. Light bounce is taken into account throughout the game, from the bottom of the ocean, where your flashlight bounces off the cargo and changes the surrounding to match, to this section where lighting is influenced by its surroundings. Naturally lit environments look excellent as well, with expected indirect shadows and lighting baked in, clearly bolstered by the experience gained from working on The Last of Us, which heavily relied on natural light. High dynamic range lighting is artfully utilized too, with eye adaptation designed to create dynamic sequences throughout. When combined with the physically based material system, the results can be rather breathtaking. In fact, materials in general are a strong point for the game. Stone really looks like stone, metal like metal, and so on. These high quality assets were actually created and managed using Algorithmic's Substance software, which helped the team transition to a proper PBR workflow and handle the large amounts of assets that were required for the game. We were particularly surprised by the prevalence of parallax occlusion maps. In many scenes, bricks, stonework, and other similar surfaces actually receive the full palm treatment, which helps bring depth to the world. Of course, reflections also play a significant role in scene construction, with a mix of cube maps and screen space reflections in addition to the expected specular. 
we were particularly impressed by the team's approach to screen space reflections here. You see the reflection in this scene, but as the object is occluded from view, the reflection disappears, just as you'd expect. But if you look closely, you'll see that there is still an approximation of the reflection just below the character. By combining these two elements seamlessly, the game was actually able to ground the characters in the world even when screen space data is not available. Shadows are another interesting point, and it's here that we see some compromise. Shadow maps are moderately detailed, but sometimes exhibit noticeable artifacts. We also notice some minor shadow striping in certain scenes. What is neat, however, is what we spotted here. It appears that motion vector data was actually used to create the effect of shadows penetrating this pool of water. It's a novel approach to rendering shadows on such a surface. We also noticed that shadows in certain scenes used bogus shapes to give the impression of sun filtering through the trees. All in all though, shadow quality is perhaps the weakest visual element in the game, and it's here that we see the limits of the PS4 come to light. It's not terribly distracting, mind you, but it could certainly be improved upon. On the other hand, the game's LOD management is actually really good. There is visible pop and it points, of course, but the game is designed to de-emphasize this, and it's not something you'll notice regularly. We also cannot fail to mention the remarkable motion blur being used here. The sample count is higher than before, and the results are quite nice. Blur is applied to both characters and camera movement alike. It's a noticeable step up from previous Naughty Dog games in this regard, and it works beautifully in the gameplay and cinematics alike. Speaking of post-processing, Uncharted 4 uses a high-quality bokeh depth of field effect to create some very dramatic scenes. Then we have the light shafts, which return from Uncharted 3 and The Last of Us with improvements. Rather than using the typical screen space solution, Naughty Dog has created a pseudo-volumetric one, which enables these light shafts to remain visible even when the source is occluded from view. And even when you can see the source, the results are often absolutely stunning. Some other neat details we picked up on include the decal system. As things such as dirt collect on the characters and objects, it's actually possible to wash them off by simply moving through clean water. Oh, and this same scene actually highlights another cool feature. The conversation happening here before driving into the waterfall? We just saw the world in similar ways. Besides, she moved. Brazil. It's cut short by the actual driving through it, but shortly after, the conversation actually resumes naturally if you listen. Showers in one day? Sorry, you were saying? Um, stop. Right. Maybe time for a visit. Maybe. First, let's run this up. This all kind of ties into the game's artificial intelligence. Previous Uncharted titles had real issues with this, where, once spotted by an enemy, the player's position remained known until all enemies or the player were dead. Uncharted 4 takes lessons from The Last of Us, though, and it presents a more variable foe. Enemy behavior is more dynamic and variable than before, and enables some very cool encounters. You can stealth your way through areas seamlessly, of course, or shoot your way through. But it's also possible to be seen while still losing track of them. Even your AI teammates can come to help on a regular basis. The game's systems are just much more flexible this time around, and it really makes a big difference for the gameplay. And even better, they added a nice encounter a select option here in the menu, which lets you play just the main shootouts and action sequences without having to replay all the puzzles and whatnot. The addition of vehicle sections also brings something new to the game. Uncharted 4 is still a linear experience, of course, but these sections definitely bring more variety and offer the players a chance to experiment with the game engine in ways that was never possible before. At this point, you might be wondering if there's actually anything to nitpick here at all. The truth is, there really isn't much, but we were a tad disappointed by the game's photo mode. Unlike the more ambitious option available in The Order 1886, where you could fly the camera around the world freely, Uncharted 4 locks the camera to the player's position. You do have plenty of options available, of course, but it's not quite as flexible as we would have liked. 
Loading times can also become problematic if you're keen on replaying the game. The first time through, it's completely seamless, so don't worry about that. But when you revisit chapters or decide to skip a cutscene, well, then you might run across some rather long loading screens. We also haven't mentioned performance yet, and that's because it's mostly very stable. But there are a few instances here and there where the performance does manage to slip below 30 frames per second. It's not very common, mind you, but it can definitely crop up, so it is something worth noting. Really though, there is very little to complain about here. Uncharted 4 is a game for the ages, the type of single player adventure that we just don't see as often these days and certainly not at this level of quality. It's massive in scope and thrilling to play. Naughty Dog has completely succeeded here and it's difficult to imagine fans being disappointed by what's on display. We also certainly hope that some of the techniques presented here, such as the world-class anti-aliasing, are picked up by other developers, but for the time being, Uncharted 4 stands above everything else available on consoles from a technical perspective. I hope you've enjoyed this look into the game, and I can't wait to hear more about the experiences you've had playing it yourself. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, this is John signing off.